theme of this session is on health and demographic surveillance sites. So to start with, uh, health and demographic surveillance sites usually take up a geographically well distributed population, somewhere around of 50,000 to 1 lakh. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, but usually in that range. Then they follow those population after doing a baseline census. Everybody in that geographical area is counted. Something like census that happens in India every 10 years. The, the problem with many of the demographic sources of information in India, like census or SRS, is that they occur very infrequently and they are not, uh, and they are not that quality that we might often require. And then you visit those households frequently, could be quarterly, could be half yearly, but definitely annually. Again, find out who has left, who is still there, where there are any births, where there are any deaths, and those kind of things. So that you do it every year at least, you have a what we call as a longitudinal data set. Every individual in that population is counted, and you have been following them up to see what happened to them, whether they are still living, they have died, they have migrated, and those kind of things. So you end up having a longitudinal population data set. But one can ask, especially people from the health background, what is use of this information? The people get born, people die, people migrate. What, how useful is that piece of information? Especially for people with the medical background. It doesn't really serve any purpose, which is true. So, except for some inherent demographic questions, for example, for people in, in demography, migration is a very important question. And I think it's also important for us. Even COVID showed us having better sense of migration is very important. Which people migrate? Where do they migrate? Why do they migrate? When do they come back? And those kind of things are important questions. But leaving that aside, unless you link this piece of information to some health, this would not really interest many uh, health researchers, right? For example, if you link it to disease, you link it to risk factors, and more importantly, if you link it to public health program data, and I will tell you in my subsequent slides how this can be done and how these are useful to understand public health. So I'm from a public health background, I'm interested in seeing what happens at community level, and, and, and does HDSS help us address that? So before I go back to this issue, let me briefly introduce you the, the Balavgad HDSS. It is the oldest HDSS in India, and to, frankly, it did not start as an HDSS. It became an HDSS sometimes later in the course of its life. AIMS runs two primary health centers uh, as a part of its uh, delivery of services. In addition to the main hospital that you see, AIMS also runs a sub-district hospital. Uh, 50 bedded at Balabgarh and two PHCs. That used to be around 50, 60,000 when they started. Now it is around one lakh population in 28 villages. Uh, so it's our responsibility to provide healthcare delivery. Our team provides them immunization, antenatal care, TB care, any national program you say, we, we implement them. So we, the people who set up Balabgarh HDSS, they were my teachers, Dr. Nath and Dr. Kapoor and all. They envisage, even at that time, being an epidemiologist, you have to have a, uh, epidemiologists always want denominators. So if you don't have a good denominator, you don't have a good population base or number. So they realize that importance. So they used to conduct annual census, even though not as an HDSS, but as a need for denominators. And also as a program delivery, we wanted to list all eligibles. How many children are eligible for vaccine? How many are for antenatal care? So you need to list people. So these were the two primary reasons why this uh, kind of activities was undertaken. And then to support this activity, a computerized uh, database of all the population was made to support delivery of services so that we know who is uh, where, who, who is, uh, requires immunization, who requires antenatal care. But at that point of time, we never we are looking at HDSS, we were not looking at maintaining a longitudinal data set. It was each year's data set kept separately in a disk. Subsequently, a research activity came, which was an Alzheimer's incidence in rural Balavgarh, where we wanted to look at population density. And for people with who know uh, epidemiology and statistics, you know population density means you have to know 
how many individuals contributed or uh, individual contributed how many months to your follow up so you need an individual's follow up over a period of time so that was the time that we started linking the data sets of people above 45 years but that set the process in motion and then we understood the importance of a longitudinal data set so this happened somewhere in 95 i joined balavgad in 88 so this happened though i was not primarily involved but it happened at that point of time then i i came to know of the indept network and we enrolled in indept network because i realized that we are doing exactly what hdss sites do till that time i had not heard the term hdss so in 2003 only balavgad was born as an hdss site along with vadu vadu also became member in 2003 of indept network okay so just briefly so this is a computerized network because of time i am not going to i am going to skip it has evolved over a, the, the it part of it from a d base to microsoft access to mysql uh, it has evolved over a period of time technology will keep changing we'll have to keep abreast of these technologies and as you can see it, it was used mainly for two things to service delivery and for monitoring services sitting in my desk in in balavgad i could see what is the vaccination coverage i don't need anybody i don't need a survey i don't need anything so those kind of monitoring was used uh, this system was used for that purpose and we used to deliver what is called as a work plan this was our unique feature that every worker when they visit a house the system will develop an output that in this house there is a 6 month old child give the person a b c d or a 2 month old child give the child dpt or a woman with are you these please follow up for any problems and those kind of a thing so this is why our hms was developed but obviously it also served the purpose of hdss so now again shift gears how can we use a computerized data set like that one i showed to answer important public health problems as i already said you have to add layers of health and public health uh, programs into it otherwise it will not add it i will give you some examples of how we have used this first is to start with is the verbal autopsy uh, again to introduce one of the most important uh, demographic uh, outcome is death and we also want to know how do people die what what is the cause of death if you don't know the cause of death you really don't understand what is killing the population which you are interested so because that's how public health and you know in india only 20% of deaths occur in hospitals almost 80% of deaths in india occurs outside hospitals for which you will not have a cause of death unless you go to their homes and do an interview which is what is called as a verbal autopsy so we interview the relatives of the people and use that information to arrive as a cause of death usually by doctors but today there are more uh, artificial intelligence based system but balavgad had this system for a long period of time uh, we have been doing this even before formal verbal autopsy was introduced but we have worked in the area of verbal autopsy uh, validating the who tool the uh, and initially verbal autopsy was only in children because in 90s only child deaths were really counted adults were ncds was not an important thing we were never bothered about uh, ncds and any of bulk of deaths used to occur in under 5 which has changed now so then we, our site got involved in the with the indep site which got involved in the inter va tool and today our aims is the agency which looks at all india cause of death using verbal autopsy which is run by the org registrar general of india srs so we uh, aims produces the about 50000 deaths in india is is uh, verbal autopsy is done through that process and we code their cause of death so if you want to know the cause of death this is important the second thing is we also know today we are moving to our ncds we want to know as a we want to monitor population how many are smoking how many are taking adequate uh, fruits and vegetables obviously these are done through surveys large surveys but in a small population because we are going to the houses every year as a part of census can we add few questions to them and yet collect this very vital piece of information so that we know what is happening to tobacco smoking or use of tobacco in that population over a period of time so we do, we introduce such questions as a part of a regular census and you can see the data which we collected in the same population using a research mode and in a surveillance mode or uh, gave you almost similar answers so that this is not only feasible it is also gives you valid results so this you can use in a small population obviously of, uh, you can monitor risk factors of uh, important risk factors 
I have given an example of NCDs, but it could be related to water, it could be related to HIV, it, it could be any behavior related to any important health condition which is locally prevalent in that area. So then, if you have, you can also see what is happening to your mortality over a period of time. This slide shows you what is happening to child mortality, uh, and this is part of my PhD thesis. Uh, so you can see that over a period of time, Number of births remained the same because birth rate came down, population went up. But neonatal deaths and, and you can say under five deaths obviously came down drastically from 167 per thousand in 1972 to 71. Similarly, the, uh, the neonatal deaths has also come down, though not that well. We all know neonatal deaths, we only started addressing in recent times. And you can also look at cause of death. You can see that tetanus uh, has come down over a period of time drastically. Preterm birth asphyxia have not been addressed that well because remember till 2002-04 most of the even deliveries used to occur in homes, not in hospitals. The push for institutional deliveries occurred much later in, in, and I will have something to say on institutional delivery subsequently. And if you have data, for example, it shows that the, the our uh, data set would tell you that tetanus vaccination coverage has improved drastically, maternal tetanus toxicity from 24% to almost 86%, almost 90% in, in the later stages. Obviously, tetanus, neonatal tetanus incidence has gone down. Similarly, if you look at ORT, introduction, and those kinds. So if you have public health program related data, and you can see that skilled birth attendance was only in 30% of uh, cases. So that's why the neonatal mortality is not coming down. So this scale tells you which of your public health programs are working, which of your public programs are not working in reducing child mortality by linking our HDSS data set with program data set. This is another interesting issue which is true more to Punjab and Haryana, which is your sex ratio at birth. You know Punjab and Haryana have one of the worst sex ratios at birth. And you can see, this is an important diagram for demographers. You can see the age and sex pyramid. The, it is becoming narrower because birth rates are going down, the child, uh, the the squares for children are narrowing, whereas it is going up because the aging, uh, the people are living longer, therefore your upper, these things have more uh, breadth now. So that's a typical changing uh, age pyramid with uh, time, which this kind of system can capture. If you look at the table below, it shows you that the, the birth rate, the, uh, the, the sex ratio is really bad in Balabar, it's below 900 for almost uh, last 20, 30 years. And you can see from the table here that uh, it is more if in the third and fourth children. So initially it used to be across the board, but later what happened that people realized that let first and second child be born as they are boy or a girl. But when they come to third and fourth children, by that time they are very clear they want a boy if they haven't had. So they will go for sex selective abortions more during third and fourth. Uh, uh, child, children, not in necessarily in first and second. So clearly the data set tells us that this kind of sex issues are simply impossible without a artificial intervention. So clearly something is happening there, which is more so in the third and fourth child. Uh, and I, you can't see that, but there are certain government schemes which are introduced for this. You can see Apna Beti, Apna Dhan, which was in the Haryana specific schemes. Sorry, I don't think this works or the Ladli schemes. These were schemes introduced by government of India to, to prevent uh, sex selective abortions. But you can see that it is not really working. Then this is another of institutional deliveries where we looked at the same data set. We found out that we, we introduced 24 into seven uh, deliveries uh, at the PHC in Chansa Dyalpur. Before that, we were not providing that services at the PHC level. Then Balabgad B is the Balabgad where you, you had 24 into 7. We also C became the 24 into 7. And then at the same time, government introduced Janani Suraksha, you know, which is a supply uh, demand side intervention where people could, uh, were paid money to use uh, institutional deliveries. Whereas the strengthening of health system is a demand, uh, is a supply side intervention. And we could use the data of institutional delivery across these two uh, time and space to make, identify whether demand side intervention works or a supply side intervention works or a uh, demand side interventions 
on top of a supply side intervention works. So the, the, it clearly showed that both demand side and uh, supply side increase institutional delivery by two times, but if you add the two, it increases by three times. So clearly there is a synergy there of doing both of them. Uh, last example from my side, this is on estimating any hospital. We have used influenza, but it could be for any disease. We want to know hospitalization due to influenza. Obviously, hospitalization due to influenza is a rare event. It does not make sense for you to do a community-based survey for this kind of data. You have to do is a hospital-based study where you find out how many people in hospitals are. But the peculiar problem in Indian setup is that hospitals really don't have a catchment area. We don't know which hospital caters to what population. So we don't have denominators. We may get numerators from the hospital-based surveillance, but we won't have denominators. So we won't be able to calculate incidence. So if you, in, this is done again in the same area, we identified hospitals which serve our Balabgad HDSS area, but also did a hospital utilization survey in our own area, where we asked every household, what hospitals do they go to for admission? In last one year, which hospitals did they get seek for admission? So by that, we could easily, uh, using that, which was about 67% of the hospitals that we covered in our hospital surveillance, 67% of the Balabgad population was using those hospitals. So we could use this data to generate a denominator and uh, uh, calculate incidence of uh, hospitalization. So obviously this has implications for HDSS, uh, who will collect this information. It requires a lot of work. That's the point. HDSS is not a very passive information system. It is an active information system. You have to invest on it. You have to put regular staff on it. You cannot just be an ad hoc basis how much frequency you will collect, how much amount you will collect. They all have resource implications. So people who want to start HDSS, they should uh, think about these things. And obviously every individual should get a unique identifier. We know Aadhaar is one, but Aadhaar cannot be used for this kind of thing. You have to develop your own unique identifier for them. What will be the structure of your database? I'm sure Dr. Sathe will talk more about these kind of things on, on databases. Longitudinal data sets, how to maintain them. We'll skip this slide. Also, demographic surveillance have an ethics issue. When you do, they are not really a research platform. They are a demographic surveillance platform. We all have, uh, we know an ethics uh, framework exists for research, but not does not exist for demographic surveillance. So it is an in, uh, interesting area for which people are thinking how to do. Do you just need ethical consent for finding out who died, who was born, etc., or do you need and actually, community does not get anything from demographic surveillance. There is no benefit to the community by telling you who died, who migrated. So HDSs are a very good platform for community-based research. And more and more people in India are doing. We started with three, but now we have about 20 HDSs platforms. They all want to capture demographic transitions. But as I said, unless we add layers of health and program information, HDSS, that's why it is called HDSS, Health and Demographic Surveillance. It's not a demographic surveillance site. So uh, many of these are now coming outside medical colleges, but also in India, ICVR is pushing for it. Many of these are coming through medical colleges. But you need to be clear what you want to do with that. You cannot do, there are hundreds of things you can do in HDSS, but you will have to prioritize and ensure that you have enough resources to do it. With increasing digitalization, it is much more easy to do it. And finally, in India, we are now trying to develop an Indian HDSS network. This was the meeting held in Pune in, in August. Uh, and we are hoping that we all can work together and generate resources, share resources, and use standardized uh, setup for doing this kind of research. Thank you.